Hello, I'm Lamar Hires, chairman of the National Speleological Society Cave Diving Section. I've made over 1,000 cave dives, and I've certified more than 600 cave divers and cave instructors. These divers and instructors have made thousands of safe cave dives. On the other hand, I've been involved in the recovery of more than a dozen divers, ranging from beginners to instructors, who didn't have any cave training and died in caves. Every one of these tragedies was completely unnecessary and avoidable. The ultimate goal of the cave diving section and diving professionals everywhere is to reduce these accidents to zero. I'd like to thank the dive operator and instructor who has shown you this videotape and also in their efforts in helping us with this. I'd also like to thank you for giving me a few moments of your time to talk about the hazards of overhead environment diving, especially caves. The easiest way to explain the danger of diving in caves without the proper training is to show it to you by following a typical accident scenario. This is Bill and Fred, two experienced open water divers who are about to dive in the open water adjacent to a cave. Bill and Fred start the dive staying in open water like they've been taught. After a while, curiosity leads them to the cave mouth. Fred has a dive light with him and they discover they can see pretty far back. At this point, they make a critical error to go in just a little ways. These divers know better. They were taught not to go into caves. Perhaps when they thought of caves, they thought of a dark, scary place. But the cave isn't dark and scary. Perhaps they rationalized to themselves that the rules don't apply here. Perhaps one of them went into the cave before and got away with it. Not this time, though. At first, they're having a great time. The water is air clear and warm. They may even pass a sign trying to remind them one last time to turn around before it's too late. But they go deeper in, not realizing their kicks and bubbles are stirring up silt and forming a cloud that completely obscures the way they came in. The same way they'll have to find their way out. One of the most serious dangers of cave diving has closed in behind Bill and Fred, but they don't even know it yet. Eventually they decide it's time to go. But which way do they go? The silt has masked the right passage out. They're lost. And now it's simply a question of whether they're lucky and find their way out before they run out of air. Or not, and drown. <laughs> This isn't the only way accidents happen in caves. Even without silt, there are dozens of scenarios that lead to the same grave end. Their light could fail, locking them into a world with absolutely no light and no hope of finding their way out. All they can do is grope the walls until their regulators start breathing hard. Even avoiding silt and a working light are no guarantee. Turning to leave, they discover that what seems to be the way out isn't. Once again, it's simply a question of luck. The game is Russian roulette. Will they find their way out first or run out of air first? Or it may not matter whether they're lost. They may use too much air going in, not realizing they won't have enough air to make it back to the entrance. Or a free-flowing regulator unexpectedly exhausts one of their air supplies deep in the cave. And there's not enough air to share to get them both back. One or both are already dead. They just don't know it yet. Accidents like these end very grimly. We have found marks on the walls where victims have thrashed around in their final desperation. We found sorrowful last words scratched in the scuba tanks. We found evidence of struggles between buddies over the remaining air. It's a horrifying, agonizing way to die. A death where you know it's happening and all you can do is wait. If I'm scaring you a bit, good. That's the point. But I'm not telling you you can never dive in a cavern or cave. What I'm telling you is that to do it right, you need to have the training, the experience, and the equipment necessary to do it safely. Cave divers rarely have accidents in caves. It's the divers without cave training who have them. Cave divers are trained to use special kicks to move through the cave without stirring up silt. 
They learn to avoid contact with the bottom, even when sharing air, writing on a slate, or handling a problem. Cave divers are trained to use special equipment. They use special lights that are much more powerful than regular dive lights. They carry at least two backup lights each. And they use redundant regulators to handle life support failure. And they're trained in special air sharing techniques needed for long swims out of a cave. Cave divers plan their air supplies carefully, keeping enough so that they can make it out even with unplanned delays or of sharing air with a team member. Cave divers always have a continuous guideline back to the surface, but it's not as simple as unrolling a reel behind you. Cave divers must learn to lay a line so they avoid entanglement, so they don't confuse it with other lines that may be in the cave, and so they don't break the line or cause it to pull free. Cave divers also learn to protect the fragile cave environment. As your instructor probably told you, if you break a piece of coral, you may have destroyed 10 years of growth. If you break a stalactite or some other geologic cave formation, you may destroy 10,000 years of nature's work. The rules and techniques that allow cave divers to dive safely were learned in the 1960s and 70s, before we knew all the dangers. Each survival principle a cave diver applies today was learned at the cost of someone's life in that era. But there is no need to repeat those painful lessons. Certainly you don't have to. And it's worth remembering that other overhead environments like wrecks or ice diving also call for special training and equipment. There's no reason to risk your life by diving in these environments without the needed equipment and training. Underwater caves are beautiful, magical places. Cave diving isn't for everyone, but for those who answer the call of their challenge and mystery with the proper equipment and training, they're the most wonderful places on earth. If cave diving interests you, ask your instructor or local dive operation about training to qualify to dive in caves, or write to the address on the screen at the end of this video. But until you have the training, stay out of the caves, no matter how safe they may look. Don't let a buddy or another diver talk you into something you know is dangerous or possibly fatal. Just say no. To avoid temptation, don't carry a light when diving near a cave. And don't let your buddy carry one either. And it never hurts to remind yourself that you're not the only one counting on a happy ending to every dive you make. Uh, right over there. How deep did you get? Uh, about 30 feet, I think. On behalf of the NSS CDS and cave divers around the world, we wish you safe, fun, and wondrous diving, wherever that diving takes you. Please dive responsibly, and thanks for listening.